Good morning, viewers. This is Kasturi Day. Today I'm back with the question answers of chemical change and reaction chapter. So <clears throat> before I start, I will request you to please uh, subscribe my channel to get the notification uh, to get the notification of my next videos. And uh, to um, uh, if you are liking the videos, press the like button and share with your friends and colleagues so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And uh, uh, one more thing that is don't forget to meditate before you start uh, your day. Okay, so uh, before we start our day, uh, we start we'll start with a short meditation uh, for just one minute, and then I will start this uh, discussion. Okay. So starting with the meditation, think of a dot, which is an energy, which is giving us power to stay healthy the whole day, to stay energized the whole day, to stay concentrated the whole day. So with a lot of amount of energy which uh, our God has given us, we'll start our discussion. So first uh, question of the day is fill in the blanks. Okay, first is a substance which increases the efficiency of a catalyst is known as what? Is known as promoters. Promoter, okay? Uh, that uh, increases the efficiency of the catalyst. And then reactions which take place in the presence of light are called photochemical reactions. Uh, photo means light and chemical is the reaction, chemical reaction where the new substance is formed. So photo in presence of light, a chemical reaction taking place that is photochemical reaction. Then petrol, LPG and kerosene are inflammable substances. That is these substances can catch fire very easily. Okay. Uh, then curdling of milk is an example of a chemical change because a totally new substance is formed when uh, milk is curdled. Okay, milk is changed into curd. What happens? A new substance is formed because that substance will not, uh, uh, if the uh, circumstances are changed, if the conditions are changed, it will not uh, get back to the liquid milk. Okay. Then dash of the metals in a list of metals is in the order of their descending chemical activity. That is the reactivity series of metals. See, uh, the reactivity series of metals are the list of metals one by one in order of their descending chemical activity. Okay, as you go down the series through the metal uh, reactivity series, you will uh, see that the chemical uh, activity of these metals decreases. Okay, uh, then heating of camphor is what is a physical change because uh, as you heat the camphor, it will uh, become vapor and as you cool the camp that vapor, it will change into camphor. So that's, that is uh, a physical change, whereas burning of camphor, if you burn the camphor, if you uh, burn with uh, in the fire, then the camphor will change into something new substance and that is known as a chemical change. Okay, a reversible thermal decomposition is called thermal dissociation reaction. Okay, during exothermic reactions, energy is released. Exo means coming out, thermic, therm thermic means heat. So heat coming out in the reaction where heat comes out, that is heat is released. Okay, energy is released. That is exothermic reaction. The dash is the oxidation. That is the process of loss of electrons. That's an oxidation reaction. Oxidation reaction is a reaction in which there is loss of electrons. And when there is a gain of electron, that is a reduction process. What happens uh, during oxidation, when there is a loss of electrons, then uh, the positive sign increases because proton concentration is more than the electron uh, concentration. 
concentration as it loses electrons. So the electrons, uh, so the negativity of that atom will come, will become less than the positivity that is protons. So that, that is oxidation process. And when it is reduction, when there is a gain of electrons, that is its negativity uh, or the negativity of the atom that increases due to the gain of electrons, negative ele electrons are negatively charged. So they will, uh, when they gain electron, when the atom gains electron, that time what happens, its negativity increases than the protons, okay? So atoms always either loses electrons or gain electrons. Its protons are not lost or gained. Its electrons are always lost or gained, okay? Then reducing agents are electron donors. Okay, so when there is oxidation process, that is what, what happens, the atom loses electrons. So that atom is a reducing agent. That element is a reducing agent because it loses electrons. That is, it gives electrons to some other atom. Okay, that, that is a electro, that, uh, element is an electron donor okay and oxidizing agent are those electrons are those agents are those elements which accepts electrons so that is which gains electrons and itself uh, this reaction what happens when it uh, when the oxidizing agent reacts with another substance that uh, that uh, reaction is a reduction reaction because it gains electrons it is itself an oxidizing agent by reducing itself Okay, dash are reducing agents. Examples are earth metals, formic acid, oxalic acid, sulfide compounds. These all are reducing agents. Okay, like earth metals are what? Like beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, radium. These all are earth metals, alkaline metals. Okay, then dash are oxidizing agent like oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, halogens, these are all oxidizing agents. They oxidize substances and get itself reduced. And reducing agents uh, reduce substances, but it get itself oxidized, okay? Then the chemical change involving iron and hydrochloric acid illustrates a displacement reaction. Iron reacting with hydrochloric acid, it will, iron will displace chlorine from hydrochloric acid and itself, okay, so, uh, sorry, it will displace hydrogen from hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it's a displacement reaction, okay. Then in the uh, type of reaction uh, called DASH, two compounds exchange their positive and negative radicals. When two compounds exchange their positive and negative radicals uh, mutually, then that is known as double decomposition reaction, okay? Then a catalyst either DASH or DASH, the rate of the chemical change, but itself remains DASH at the end of the reaction. What happens? A, ca a catalyst either increases the rate of the reaction, that's a positive catalyst, and uh, if it decreases, either increases or decreases the rate of the chemical reaction. If it increases, that's a positive catalyst. If it decreases the rate of the chemical reaction, then it is a negative catalyst, but itself remains unchanged. That's why it's a catalyst. That's that it, it increases or decreases the rate of the chemical reaction, but itself remains unchanged, okay? Uh, at the end of the reaction, so that is a catalyst. Then on heating, hydrated copper sulfate, <coughs> hydrated copper sulfate, if we heat it, the hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color, okay? So if we heat that, it will lose its uh, water, water of crystallization, Okay, and it will become white and hydrous powder. Okay, so it will lose its crystallization also. It's water of crystallization, it will lose that will it and it will become from blue to it will become white and hydrous powder. Okay, then uh, state the type of the reactions chlorine plus 2BKBr, Cl2 plus 2KBr forms 2Cl2 and Br2. It's a displacement reaction because chlorine displaces bromine from KBr, okay, and uh, bromine comes out. 
Then NaOH plus HCl. NaOH is a base, is an alkali, and it reacts with an acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, to form salt and water. So salt is sodium chloride and water. So this reaction is a neutralization reaction. Then mercury oxide, HgO, 2HgO, it, uh, it forms 2Hg plus O2. So it's a decomposition reaction. When heat is applied to mercury oxide, it decomposes to mercury metal and oxygen is uh, given out. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, iron plus CuSO4, Fe plus CuSO4 forms FeSO4 and copper. So what happens? Iron displaces copper from copper sulfate. So the copper sulfate is a blue color solution. So when iron is uh, reacted with blue color copper sulfate solution, it will form uh, the solution changes from blue to green due to the formation of ferrous sulfate and copper is uh, 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 given out as a red copper uh, metal. Okay. Then uh, lead dioxide, PbO2, <clears throat> reacts with sulfur dioxide to form a PbSO4. So that is a combination reaction. Okay, that's a combination because re reaction because PbO2 combines with sulfur dioxide to form PbSO4. Okay. Next is Potassium chlorate, 2KClO3, uh, gives 2KCl plus 3O2. So it's a thermal decomposition reaction. That is when heat is given to KClO3. That is when 2KClO3 is heated. Then it decomposes to 2KCl plus 3O2. Again, uh, 2H2O plus, uh, gives us 2H2 Oh, uh, sorry, 2H2O2 gives us 2H2O plus O2. So hydrogen peroxide again decomposes to water and oxygen. So this is a decomposition reaction. Then uh, potassium nitrate reacting with sulfuric acid H2SO4 forms HNO3 and KHSO4. So that's a double displacement reaction it forms. Like KNO3 it, uh, and H2SO4 interchanges their uh, uh, positive and negative radicals and it will form HNO3, that is H combining with the uh, potassium nitrate is nitrate uh, of the potassium nitrate and K combines with the sulfate of sulfuric acid, sulfate radical. So this is the thing what happens. Then it's a double displacement reaction. Then copper oxide reacts with hydrogen to form copper metal and water is formed. That's a redox reaction or displacement reaction also. You can say hydrogen displaces copper from copper oxide as hydrogen lies above copper okay then calcium carbonate in the metal activity series rather so calcium carbonate decomposes to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so this reaction is a decomposition reaction and ammonium chloride decomposes to ammonia plus hydrochloric uh, hydrogen chloride gas. So this is also a decomposition reaction. Then PBO, that's a base reacting with uh, nitric acid 2HNO3 to form PBNO3 hole twice with uh, 2H2O. So salt and water is formed. So therefore, when base reacts with an acid to form salt and water, that's a neutralization reaction. Then silver nitrate with sodium chloride, silver nitrate solution reacting with sodium uh, chloride solution, uh, forming a precipitate of silver chloride and sodium nitrate solution. So that's a precipitation reaction or double displacement, you can also say. So it's a precipitation reaction as silver chloride is a precipitate that is white precipitate that is formed when silver nitrate solution reacts with sodium chloride solution. Again, 2CO, that is carbon monoxide, when reacts with oxygen, it forms two carbon dioxide, 2CO2. That's a combination reaction where carbon monoxide combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Again, if carbon uh, is combined with oxygen, then carbon dioxide is also formed. So that's a, or that is also a combination reaction. Then trilate tetroxide, PB3O4, 
that decomposes on heating to form 6 PVO, that is lead monoxide and oxygen is formed. So thermal decomposition takes place of lead trilate tetroxide to form PVO and oxygen. Then decomposition reaction, a reversible reaction. Here what happens? Uh, uh, see, PCl5, potassium pentachloride on heating, it forms potassium trichloride and chlorine is formed. And when potassium trichloride and chlorine is, both of them are cooled, it again forms potassium pentachloride. So that's a decomposition reaction as well as it is a reversible reaction because it comes back to potassium pentachloride. Then uh, zinc, uh, displa zinc displaces <laughs> hydrogen from sulfuric acid to form zinc sulfate and hydrogen. So that is a displacement reaction. Then sodium hydroxide, that's a base reacting with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride in water. That's a neutralization reaction. Then lead nitrate reacting with hydrochloric acid, it forms lead chloride and nitric acid. That's a double displacement reaction, exchanging their radicals, negative and positive radicals. The two uh, compounds, they exchange their radicals. So that's a double displacement reaction. Okay. Then uh, this nitrogen and oxygen combining to form 2NO. Okay, that is a synthesis or combination reaction, can say. Then 2NO plus oxygen, it forms nitrogen dioxide. That is also a combination reaction. Then FeSO4 combining with sodium hydroxide, it forms FeOH whole twice and sodium sulfate. That's a, that is also a double displacement reaction. Okay, so then we come to some multiple choice questions, which of the following is not a characteristic of a chemical change. It is irreversible, not yet energy change is involved, no net change, sorry, no net energy change is involved, new substances formed involves absorption and liberation of energy. So in uh, the characteristic of a chemical change is that it is irreversible, the change is irreversible, then a new substance is formed altogether. When there is a chemical change, there is a new substance formed. And uh, during a chemical change, there is either absorption or liberation of energy. So first three and four, these are the three characteristics which are correct, which matches the chemical change. But the second one, that is no net energy change is involved. That is not a characteristic of the chemical change. So that's, that will be the answer. Then a reaction of a type AB plus CD will give us AD plus CB. <clears throat> so what a reaction type it is this? It is, <clears throat> the options are no chemical change, decomposition of AB and CD, exchange of ions of AB and CD, combination of AB and CD. It's not combination because two uh, different uh, substances are formed, then uh, decompose. it's not decomposition because A, B and C, D are not decomposing, but they are exchanging their ions. So A, B is becoming A, D and C, D is becoming C, B. So that's an ion exchange, ion exchange of ions of A, B and C, D. <clears throat> Then the reaction barium chloride aqueous solution and sulfuric acid that is also in aqueous solution. Uh, when they react, they form barium sulfate that's a precipitate, that's a solid, and hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution is formed. So, what happens? There is <clears throat> displacement reaction, neutralization, decomposition, or double displacement. It's a double displacement uh, reaction because they exchange their ions or you can say a precipitation reaction because barium sulfate is a precipitate that is formed, okay? Then thermal decomposition of sodium carbonate will produce what? Uh, so uh, thermal decomposition of sodium carbonate uh, will produce carbon dioxide, oxygen, sodium hydroxide, no other product. It will produce sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. So from the option, the one, number one is Correct. That is, it will produce carbon dioxide when sodium carbonate decomposes. It will produce carbon dioxide along with sodium oxide. Then what type of chemical reaction takes place when electricity is passed through water? When electricity is passed through water, water decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen. So that type of reaction is known as decomposition reaction. 
electrical decomposition, electrolysis that is called. Then which of the following substance is formed when magnesium oxide is dissolved in water? When magnesium oxide is dissolved in more water, magnesium hydroxide is formed. Okay, so number two is the correct option, not uh, magnesium dioxide or magnesium hydride or magnesium chloride. So number two, magnesium hydroxide would be the correct answer. Then lime water turning milky is a standard indication for the presence of what? Presence of carbon dioxide. So if this carbon dioxide is passed through lime water, it will turn milky. Okay, so that is the test for carbon dioxide. <laughs> Then when a pinch of baking soda is added to vinegar, no reaction takes place. Bubbles of brown gas are formed. The bubbles of gas come out with a hissing sound and the solution turns black. So when a pinch of baking soda is added to vinegar, there will be what? Bubbles of gas will come out with, by producing a hissing sound due to the formation of carbon dioxide. Okay, as carbon dioxide is produced when baking soda is mixed with vinegar, then there will be a hissing sound and bubbles of gas will come out. Then which of the following is observed when an iron nail is dropped into a solution of aqueous copper sulfate solution? So aqueous copper sulfate solution is a blue colored solution and when iron nail is dropped, the iron reacts with this copper sulfate and will form iron sulfate and copper will be dis uh, I mean, uh, displaced. Okay, and this copper will uh, <clears throat> attach to the iron in the form of red copper. Okay, so uh, the reaction will be the blue solution, that is blue solution of the copper sulfate will turn to green due to the formation of ferrous sulfate. Okay, so third option is correct. Then when a nail is dropped into a solution of aqueous copper sulfate and removed after half an hour, we will observe dash on the nail, reddish deposits of, uh, sorry, brown deposits of copper, because copper will be displaced from the copper sulfate by the iron, okay? So uh, the fourth option is correct. Then the color of the substance formed when silver chloride is exposed to sunlight. When uh, silver chloride is exposed to sunlight, a gray silver metal will be formed. Gray lustrous silver metal will be formed due to the photolytic decomposition of silver chloride into silver and chlorine, greenish yellow gas will be evolved due to the presence of chlorine, which is chlorine, that greenish yellow gas that will be chlorine and the gray silver metal will be seen, found as lustrous silver metal. Then name the following. A carbonate which does not decompose on heating, that is sodium carbonate. A nitrate which produces oxygen as the only gas, that's sodium nitrate. Okay, a nitrate which produces oxygen as the only gas. When sodium nitrate uh, decomposes, it produces oxygen. Then a compound which produces carbon dioxide on heating carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, when decomposes, uh, on uh, when it is heated, it will produce carbon, carbon dioxide, a nitrate which produces brown gas on heating, it's potassium nitrate. When it is heated, it will produce a brown gas of nitrogen dioxide. Then a chemical reaction in which heat is evolved is an exothermic reaction, a reaction which takes place in the presence of electricity. It is electrolytic reactions or electrolysis, okay? A substance which you do not burn in air or oxygen, that is non-combustible substances, okay? Then uh, the substance which increases the rate of reaction without itself undergoing any change, that's a catalyst. The minimum temperature at which uh, a substance starts burning, that's an ignition temperature. Then gas liberated with ammonium nitrate is heated, that is nitrous oxide, that's called laughing gas. When ammonium nitrate is heated at 290 degrees centigrade, it will form laughing gas and water, that is nitrous oxide, N2O. 
Then two stable metallic hydroxides, calcium hydroxide and lead hydroxide, which does not decompose on heating. Two metals which does which does not react with oxygen, silver and gold, as these elements are less reactive and comes in the downward uh, in the downside of the reactive metal reactivity series. Then two metals which directly combine with sulfur on heating are magnesium and iron, forming magnesium sulfide and ferrous sulfide. Then two metals which are directly combined with nitrogen on heating, magnesium and lithium nitride. Magnesium nitride, Mg3 and 2, and lithium nitride, Li3N. Okay. Next, we come to complete the following, also balance them. Ca plus O2 gives lime and water. Uh, lime, sorry, it gives lime. And this lime com combines with water to form slake lime. So what happens? 2Ca plus O2 gives 2CaO and CaO combines with water to form CaOH whole twice. K plus O2 that, uh, that forms potassium oxide. 4K plus 2O2 gives K2O, that's potassium oxide. Then this potassium oxide reacts with water to form KOH, caustic potassium, 2KOH. Then 2H2O, when electric current is passed through, it forms 2H2 plus oxygen, electrolytic uh, reaction. Electrolysis taking place of water to form hydrogen and oxygen. Ammonium chloride for decomposes to form ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas. Aluminium combines with HCl, 2Al combines with 6HCl to form aluminium chloride, 2AlCl3 plus 3H2. Copper sulfate plus iron combines to form FeSO4, that is iron displaces copper forming ferrous sulfate and copper. Then ammonium nitrate, when heat is given, it forms nitrous oxide and oxygen. Silver nitrate decomposes on heating to form silver metal, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen is evolved. Then trilate tetroxide on heating, it forms lead monoxide and oxygen is formed, 6PBO and O2. N2 plus O2 combines to form 2NO. Then copper carbonate decomposes to form CuO plus CO2. Okay. Then sodium nitrate 2NaO3 2NaNO3 uh, decomposes to form 2NaO2 plus oxygen. Carbon monoxide plus oxygen, that is 2CO plus O2 gives us 2CO2. Potassium pentox, sorry, phosphorus pentoxide P2O5 plus 3H2O forms phosphoric acid. 2H3PO4. Then NaCl uh, combines with so silver nitrate, sodium chloride, aqueous solution of sodium chloride combines with aqueous solution of silver nitrate to give a precipitate of silver chloride and an aqueous solution of sodium nitrate. Lead nitrate and potassium iodide also forms potassium iodide as a PPT, as a precipitate, and uh, uh, potassium nitrate as aqueous solution as formed. Then ammonia combines with oxygen in presence of platinum to form <clears throat> nitrogen monoxide, and uh, this one, water is formed, 4NO plus 6H2O. Now, what do you observe when lead nitrate is heated? When lead nitrate is heated, it produces, three things are formed. It produces light yellow solid of lead monoxide. Okay, a reddish brown gas escapes, that's of nitrogen, and a colorless gas also escapes, that is of oxygen. Okay, then silver chloride, when exposed to sunlight, it decomposes to white, gray, lustrous, silver metal, and a greenish yellow gas of chlorine is, is formed. Then hydrogen peroxide, when exposed to sunlight, it decomposes to a viscous, less viscous, colorless liquid, that is water, and a colorless gas of oxygen is evolved. So a less viscous, uh, this, uh, this is uh, this uh, hydrogen peroxide, is a pale blue uh, color, and it de decomposes, when it decomposes in sunlight, it turns into, and it's a like, little bit more viscous than water. So uh, the, it, it will become less viscous, uh, then this one, hydrogen peroxide, and the color will change from pale blue to colorless. Okay, then H2S gas, when passed through copper sulfate solution, then a black precipitate of copper sulfide is formed. Okay, a black precipitate will be formed. And the color, uh, the copper sulfate color, that is blue color, will change to colorless due to the formation of sulfuric acid, which remains in the 
solution. Then barium chloride is added to sodium sulfate. Barium chloride will add it to sodium sulfate, then barium sulfate and sodium chloride is formed. A white precipitate of barium sulfate is formed. So these two are in solution form and a white precipitate solid will be formed that is barium sulfate and uh, an insoluble uh, and that will be insoluble in water and the sodium chloride which remain dissolved in water that's why it's not absorbed. Then water is added to quick lime. Quick lime is calcium oxide. When water is added to a head, a large amount of heat is evolved and uh, there will be a hissing sound, okay? Like the sound of a snake. So that will, there will be a sound of the uh, hissing sound and due to the formation of calcium hydroxide, which will be formed very vigorously. That's why this hissing sound comes out. Then sodium chloride solution is added to silver nitrate solution, then a white precipitate of silver chloride will be formed with the colorless solution of sodium nitrate. Chlorine is passed through potassium iodide solution, then it will form what? Potassium chloride, which is white in color or colorless, white or colorless, and it's vit vitreous crystal. It will be crystal type. Okay, potassium chloride will be crystal type. And uh, a purple solid of iodine will be formed because iodine is displaced by chlorine. So a purple solid will be formed. We will see a purple solid, okay? Uh, <clears throat> potassium iodide is a solution and chlorine is a greenish yellow gas. So it will uh, change into a solid that is purple colored solid that will be of iodine and a white colored crystal will be formed that will be of potassium chloride. Then chlorine is passed through potassium bromide, bromide solution. And then what happens a reddish brown liquid of bromine will be seen. That is bromine is formed by displacing uh, bromine from uh, potassium bromide by chlorine. Okay, and uh, this potassium chloride will be a white or colorless which is crystal. Then potassium iodide is added to lead nitrate and a yellow precipitate of lead iodide will be formed and that will be uh, seen in a colorless solution of potassium nitrate. Okay, so this is the end of for uh, today. Uh, please go through these questions. If you have any doubt regarding any question or if you want to ask any question uh, other than this one, I have not finished the question answer series till uh, now. Uh, some uh, objectives I have finished, but many questions are more to come. So uh, you can wait for that or you can, uh, if you have any other questions regarding this chapter, you can uh, write in the comment box. Okay. And uh, I will uh, try to reply you as soon as possible. And if you're liking the videos, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And don't forget to uh, subscribe my channel to get the notifications. Okay. And uh, uh, if you want any test, you can write, uh, uh, write me in the comment box and we'll uh, prepare the question paper accordingly and give you the test on the, uh, this uh, on this, I will provide you the link and you can uh, answer this question, answer the test questions and send me in my email ID that is kasturi74 at the rate gmail.com. Uh, and I will send you the answer, corrected answers. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, to, to uh, appear for this test, you need to subscribe my channel. Okay. And don't forget to meditate before starting your day. Okay. So, have a good day and thank you for joining.